Okay, I took the block outside for the final wash before assembly. And you know the ritual there. You hot soapy water, brush out every oil passage, wash the whole block, brush, 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 every oil passage. <laughs> I think the uh, Keith Black Instructions 40 years ago said, wash it and brush out the oil passages over and over again until you're absolutely sure it's clean and then do it once more and so that's that's good advice of course then you blow it all off but unlike cast iron you don't have to worry about it rusting on you while you're blowing it off and everything it's that's great and the cleanup is a lot easier on aluminum rather than cast iron you know with these really you can take a nylon brush you know you should have already looked through all the oil passages and everything anyway, make sure that they were, you know, drilled properly and that they go through and everything. And so you should know they're good. So you just take little nylon brushes on an aluminum block and just brush, 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 brush. And it'll all be clean when you get done. But if it's cast iron, you need you know, brass or steel, either one really, because, you know, there could be rust in there depending on you know, was this a new block? Was this a 50-year-old block you found in a field? You know what I mean. So, if it's cast iron, spend a lot more time than on a brand new aluminum. It's not... These are pretty easy. Pretty easy. And normally I would have started the assembly with the uh, galley plugs. You know, these are... Most everything on here is an ORB plug, which means it's machined right there for that o-ring and you want to put some oil on that you know how rubber doesn't like to slide so you don't want it snagging on you and trying to bunch up on you and pop out so you want to oil up the hole and oil up the o-ring the reason I didn't put these in first is I had two helpers and I wanted to get some use out of them you know what I mean they were going to do the heavy lifting on the crank and hammering on the caps and all of that so that worked out great Glad they came by. So I knocked down the center main and then tapped the crank back and forth, to make sure that the thrust bearing was seated good, and then tightened it up and checked the thrust. I had to put this on here so I, the dial indicator had some metal to sit on and checked the thrust, and it's five, which is perfect between the two and seven spec. So everything's looking good there. Now I can put the rest of the main caps on, put the oil galley plugs in, and it's going to be good. In the 11th hour, I finally got a Keith Black gear drive. So now I have to go to work on it. It's the idler bearing was bad, so I had to order a idler bearing and the, the uh, Memorial Day weekend it's gonna be six days before I get this idler bearing but I've got to get this thing cleaned up I don't think soap and water is gonna do it I don't think bar saw is gonna do it I don't like a bead blasted finish that doesn't look right I don't like the aluminum mag wheel cleaner that's muriatic acid you know I don't think I'm gonna like that I think I need to, I've got a cheap Harbor Freight soda blaster, but then my air compressor, the dump valve quit, and the motor tried, tried to start under head pressure and smoke the motor. I'm not having a real good week, but I am going to figure out how to clean this thing up and get it ready to go. The idler bearing should be here, and I should be able to get all of this somehow looking good. I, you know, that other one I had was for a raised cam, and of course that wouldn't work. So I'll get the main caps on here, and get the galley plugs in, and keep moving on. And I should have said why I start with the galley plugs and the main reason is 
to keep from embarrassing yourself when, yes, you forgot one and you've got to take the timing chain back off and everything. It's, it's embarrassing. So just put these in first and avoid making yourself look dumb. Okay, here comes the part we all hate. We all worry about our rear main seal leaking. And the way this is made as one piece, there's really no place to put any gooey, you know? We don't... I mean, you could put a little here, I guess, but... Uh, I mean, I like these seals if they work. But... Look at that. I mean, it's just... Ugh. Just, it looks like a straight path to you and me, oil to come straight down there. But, Ray says this is going to work. I only clocked it about a hundred thousandths. Normally I would do it a little more, but... Oh, let's hope this really works. You know, it's kind of nerve-wracking. We all don't want rear seals leaking. But, he says not to put anything anywhere. You know, let me, let me put a little oil on this too. I've already smeared some on the side, so that should all be a non-event, but it just bothers you. We don't want a rear main seal leak, you know? That's just kind of universal. You don't want to hang this rubber up. Kind of make sure it's still in there. He says that's going to seal it. It's not trying to push him up, so I'm hoping that's going to work. Ray says it will. He knows more about it than I do. Now don't forget on these side bolts, these are high quality bolts real bolts, not hardware store stuff. And so that means, this one will give you a better example, you can't hardly see it on the small one. There's a radius in the corner here. So you have to have a washer, and of course they have the right washers, with a chamfer for the radius to go into. So when you put these together, you can't do it backwards or that's what you've got it won't go it's got a big radius in there and you have to have a chamfer so when you put these bolts back in on your mock-ups and on your final assembly and everything make sure that you've got that chamfer towards the bolt head so it'll tighten up. By the way, the crank still turns after everything was torqued down. Now I'll set up and we'll give a final check to the thrust clearance. Okay, we got it zeroed. Yeah, it looks like four. I'm happy. You know, I'm always preaching, mock it up, mock it up, mock it up. And I mocked up that sexy oil pan on here the other day, and you know it was hitting that by about 15 thousandths or so. And I thought, well, you know, maybe the gasket will clear that. Or, you know, I could have just touched it with the mill, and, and it would have cleared and all of that. So I take it off, and, and I knew I could have just ground these off, but you just take taking a flap wheel to a brand new block I don't know I just I didn't want to do it well so now 
uh, all I've got to use with this other oil pump is a regular Mylodon dragster pan and so well you know I ought to try that well you know what happened it it hits them well now I don't know you know them thick black ones that have the built-in windage tray I like those and everything and I thought it would seal good but they don't clear a four or five hundred stroke so I can't use that now I'm stuck with either running two pan gaskets or I don't I don't know if I can find something thicker or running a windage tray with just a sandwich you know to space this up it's just wrong it's just all wrong because I didn't mock it up with the pan I'm going to use mock it up mock it up and that now I gotta do something kinky to overcome that it's just wrong mock it up and I was telling you about after you wash it and bring it in and blow it off and everything first step is to put in the galley plugs all over the block keeps the bugs out of it I know you people don't live somewhere where there's bugs but we got them just just put put all the plugs in it make sure that way you'll know the threads are right and everything's gonna be good well, then my two buddies showed up and they wanted to do something. So we did this crankshaft thing and I kind of wanted them for the heavy lifting anyway. So I didn't put in the galley plugs first. So yesterday I started putting these in. Well, I get down to the last one. Now this is in a curve. And then it's machined, see, back that way and curved this way. And it's right there on the rib. It's kind of hard to kind of get your groove thing going on. So I tried to get it in and it didn't work good. And tried it again, it didn't work good. It's like it was trying to cross thread or something. And I, I finally gave up and I went inside and I'm laying in bed all night thinking, if I can't get that thing to go in there, then I've got to take this whole thing apart. After the cam's in, after it's cleaned up, after the crank's in, after the thruster check, and tap this hole and wash everything out again. Start all over again, all because I didn't start with the galley plugs. But I came out this morning and screwed right in first try so i'm just glad i i didn't want to do all that over again 